This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video to show you how you can take a fastener, in this case a metric nut, and create configurations so that you can use it for various sizes. I'm going to show you how to do that fairly quickly. Um, not, it's not exactly instantaneous, but it involves using some data from the web from a manufacturer of nuts to copy and paste the various sizes you need for the nut in order to work in different different applications. Now there are, is a toolbox in SolidWorks, but some companies still prefer to have their own design library, uh, create their own fasteners. Some people go to McMaster, and in McMaster you can, we'll see McMaster, McMaster actually allows you to download a SolidWorks file of a fastener that you intend to use um, in an assembly of some kind if you're planning on buying it from them. So you can download SOLIDWORKS files of these uh, fasteners. However, the size of the fastener may not be exactly what you want. Different manufacturers vary somewhat. And uh, for other reasons, because the toolbox in the past and to some extent still has caused problems for people, particularly when upgrading from one release of SOLIDWORKS to another. So you might just prefer to use your own fastener library. So to begin with, I have a nut, and before I do anything else, what I want to do is to go and change the names of some things in the nut so that I can use the design table a little more effectively. So one thing I did was I changed the extrude boss, um, the name of the extrude boss, to thickness. If I open up the thickness, right-click on the hex sketch, which I also renamed, each one of these dimensions has a name. I changed the name from D1 at hex to flats at hex so that I would know that that 16 represented the distance across the flats for this nut. Eight and a half is the size of the minor diameter so I changed the name of that dimension to minor diameter at hex. I also in the cut extrude under sketch the cut extrude that I used to create that chamfer looks like this. That cut extrude sketch is uh, tangent to the outside edge of this and it's tangent to the outside edge of this so that as the nut size changes the chamfer can change as well because the chamfer was created as a cut at a 45 degree angle flipping the side to cut. Now I'm using 45 here I would actually use 60 if I wanted a nut that had the actual angle of that chamfer which is 30 degrees so 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is 90, and so you'd have to put a 60 here. I find the 45 a little easier to see, so I'm just going to leave it at 45, and then I mirrored it to the other side. Now there's a chamfer here, and chamfer also has dimensions associated with it. The dimension I'm concerned about is this one. If I double click on it, it says 0.75, that's the size that I gave it. If I simply select it on the other, on the uh, Feature Manager, I changed the name of that dimension to size at chamfer 1. Now, I'm going to move or pan the drawing so that the part is off to one side. First thing I'm going to do is go to a website, and the website I'm going to go to is the Fairbury Fastener Supply Company website. The reason I'm using their website is because they have a table of dimensions for various fasteners and hardware. And the table I have for dimensions for that hardware is something I can copy and put into an Excel spreadsheet. So from their home page, I simply went over to fasteners and hardware, then information facts, and then I went down to dimensions of fasteners for reference only, not all products shown are available, and I scrolled down until I got to the metric fasteners area. So I'm going to start by just going to hex nut and it gives you a table showing you the various dimensions of various size metric nuts. So I'm right now the one I'm making is an M10. The one I made is an M10. Thread pitch is 1.5. The maximum uh, width across flats is 16. We don't need to worry about the minimum but the width across corners we aren't going to need either but we do need to know what the maximum thickness is. So I'm going to copy all the cells in this table by highlighting them. Control C, or you could just right click and pick copy. Then I'm going to go to an Excel spreadsheet, start a new sheet, go to the upper left hand corner, right click and paste, and it'll paste each one of those pieces of data into its own cell. 
Now I'm using this information just to keep track of what I'm doing, but I'm not going to copy that information. I do want um, a column. I've got the thread pitch, which is good. I also want a column showing the width across the flats, but I only want the maximum. I don't want the minimum, so I'm just going to delete that column. I don't care about the width across corners, so I'm going to delete that column. Maximum thickness I'll use, but minimum thickness I won't use. And I also am going to want the major diameter, so I'm going to copy this first row, paste it over here so it lines right up. And now that it's highlighted, I'm going to go to the Home tab, and I'm going to go to Find and Select, and I'm saying I'm going to replace in that column things that I've highlighted. I'm going to replace the letter M with nothing. So now I've got the sizes of each one of those, uh, the, the major diameter of each one of the nuts. So again, I'm looking at M10 right now, so the M10 ends up with a 10. Now just to make sure that those are going to be considered numerical values, I'll grab all the numbers, right click, go to Format Cells, and just make sure that they're numbers. It means it's going to give them decimal places, that's fine but I can use them now as uh, values. So I'm going to bring this over to the side. And now I'm going to go back to SolidWorks. And in SolidWorks, I'm going to insert a design table. So if I go to the Insert pull-down menu, go to Tables, and pick Design Table, it comes up and asks me how I want to make this. I'm going to auto-create it. When I auto-create it, it'll give me a list of dimensions that I can use. And I want to know, I want the flats at hex, I want the minor diameter. Those things are going to change. The thickness is going to change. The size of the chamfer is going to change. And I'm going to ask also put in the cosmetic thread. I'll do that in just a bit. OK, so I've got the chamfer size, the flatness. What I want to do is add the cosmetic thread. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to double click on that cosmetic thread. It, it adds it to the table and indicates what its current state is, which is unsuppressed. We'll leave it that way. But then I'm going to double click on the dimension representing the chamfer. So now I have a column for the major diameter. Let me stretch that out. One thing about working with a design table in SolidWorks is if you click outside the table, it automatically closes. So you may find that I do that several times in this video. You'll probably do that several times as well as I just did, not unintentionally. But. So I'm going to go back over to the configurations. I'm going to go to the configurations, open up tables, right click, edit table, and edit the design table. Um, I don't need either one of those things, so I'm just going to say OK. It opens up the table, and what I was trying to do before was to stretch the table so it was a little bit longer and a little bit wider. So I'll do that now. What I want first is a list of the names of each of these configurations. So I'll go over to my design uh, my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to highlight all the entities in that first column that I want copied. I'll copy them. I'll come over here, right click in one cell and paste, and now I've got a column with all that data in it. Distance across the flats, I'll go back to my Excel spreadsheet. Distance across the flats is right here, so I'll highlight all the values in that column. Right click, copy, come back over, right left uh, left click in the uh, cell under flats, paste those values in, so now I've got all those values. I'll go back over to my Excel spreadsheet. We're looking for the thickness. I'll highlight all the values in thickness, right click, go to copy, come back over here, find thickness, left click in the first cell, right click and paste. Now I've got all the thicknesses and they're all lined up with the proper name of the configuration and with the proper size of the uh, distance across flat. Now I also need to know the thread pitch. Now there's no dimension for thread pitch that I create, use to create that nut. I'm going to right click and copy the thread pitch and put it in its own column. I'm not going to try to type anything in that column because thread pitch is not an element in a SolidWorks part. But I want that thread pitch because I want to use it to generate the minor diameter, because the minor diameter is going to be the major diameter. Major diameter minus the thread pitch. And I have a column for major diameter here, so I can go back to my spreadsheet, 
highlight all the values that I created in the major diameter column. Oops. I am going to undo that, right click and copy. So I'll come back over here under major diameter and I'll, well, I'll just put it in the first one so it knows how many to do. Okay, now the reason it does that is because I have to make the column a little bit wider in order to see it. So now I've got all the information that I need. Now this column over here, instead of having a value that I type in, since there's nothing in the uh, tables that I copied from uh, the website that would give that to me, I'm going to change that from just a value to an equation. And the equation I'm going to change it to is going to say make the value in this cell equal to, I'll use a parenthesis here, equal to the major diameter. The major diameter is, is in cell, uh, cell G3, so equal to G3 minus, and I want to subtract H3, and that will give me, well, it won't give me anything because H3 is blank in this one. That should be a 1.5, so I'll just type that in. All right, now I'll go back to minor diameter. H3 G3 minus H3, press enter, and it gives me 8.5, which is what that is. Now, the value of that is I can take that equation, I can copy it, and then I can paste it in all of the other cells. And when I do, it'll use the values from these two columns, the major diameter column and the thread pitch column, in order to, to create a value, determine a value for the minor diameter. I'm going to do something similar with this chamfer. That's the chamfer right here that goes down to the thread and that should be the major diameter minus the minor diameter divided by 2. So once again I'll make an equation from this and the equation will be make that cell value equal to the major diameter G3 minus the minor diameter which is C3 divided by 2, which is going to give me 0.75, the same value I had before. Now I can highlight that, right click, copy that cell, and then paste it by left clicking and dragging down, paste that value into all of those locations. So now what I have, I just clicked outside. I've got some new configurations. I pick OK for the new configurations, and now all those new configurations are available to me. If I double click on one, let's hope it works. It does. So what happens here is, yeah, so it makes the, the uh, nut get smaller so that it matches the design table configurations for the M1.6 nut, and you can see the, conf the uh, cosmetic thread is now the right size, that chamfer is the right size for that nut, the chamfer on the outside is the right size for that nut, and uh, the thickness is the right size for that nut. M10 is going to look exactly like the default because that's what I started with. It should be exactly the same. So go through, check all your configurations, make sure they all do what you want them to do, and now you've got a nut that can be used for any size. Now I would save this in a folder. Um, might call it maybe source, but it also put it in the design library. The design library is right over here. If I open that up, then I open up the design library, drag it up and down, you can see there's already a number of folders in the design library. I can also go in, by the way, and make a new folder by uh, just going and creating a folder using the Windows Explorer. If I take a look at this, let's say we want parts, we'll put it in the hardware folder. So that's what's in the hardware folder right now. So what I'm going to do is go back over to configurations, hold the control key down, pick metric nut, which is what I named this file. I need to pin this open. I'm going to pin it open like that because I'm going to drag and drop this, the title metric nut, by holding the control key down on the left button. I'm going to drag and drop it right into the design library. Now it goes into the design library. It's called metric nut add it to the library. Now if I were to create a new assembly drawing for instance, or assembly file for instance, that nut's available to me. Anytime I want to use it, I go over and drag it in. Comes in and I have a choice of what configuration to use for it. If I select it and go to properties, I can pick a different configuration for it. I can have as many of these as I want in an assembly. 
and each one of them could have its own configuration assigned so that I can use it now for any size I want. Now I would do the same thing for bolts and what you might want to do with bolts is have just one file that has all the bolt sizes but you can have additional configurations with bolt length. So you might want to have a single file with each bolt size and then have configurations that only adjust the length of the bolt. 